biological psychiatry is about not focusing on superficial signs and symptoms, but instead stripping that back to the underlying function of the brain. And the idea here is that we can develop drugs which we know act on the brain, and in order for us to be able to assign these drugs to the right individuals and the right disorder groupings, we need to have a clear biological understanding of what these disorders are. One of our most interesting recent findings is that we've identified that habit-forming biases are a transdiagnostic trait. And what that means is we can see the same biases towards forming habits excessively in individuals with OCD as we see in individuals with alcohol addiction, for example. We also see the same pattern in individuals with compulsive behaviors characteristic of eating disorders, so binge eating disorder or excessive purging in some eating disorders. What's particularly useful about this model is that we've also established specificity. So while we see a link between compulsive behaviors across disorders and habit-forming biases, there's no relationship between excessively forming habits and other unrelated psychiatric symptoms like depression or anxiety or social anxiety, for example. So what this has given us for maybe the first time is some real specificity in terms of a biological model that maps onto a clear clinical phenomenon. Psychiatry is at a crossroads. We've been trying to do research for the last 50 years, trying to figure out the biological basis of psychiatric disorders. But what's become apparent is that trying to find a biological basis of categories ascribed by the Diagnostic Manual of Mental Disorders um, is never going to happen. The DSM is a very useful manual in that it's extremely reliable. You can use these criteria and you'll get the same kind of diagnoses across countries and centers for the same individuals. That's kind of the idea behind it. But the problem is it wasn't built to be biologically valid. So some very educated people have made clusterings based on the kinds of treatments that work for certain groups um, and also based on historical reasons but not based on the underlying biology, which simply wasn't around at the time of the first iteration of this manual. The big shift in psychiatry at the moment is away from clusters of superficial signs and symptoms towards the underlying biology that leads to these disturbances in ways that can be very different at the brain level. Let's take depression and OCD, for example. Those are two phenomenologically very different disorders, although they share a pattern of um, comorbidity of occurring together in the same individuals and some heritability, we think of them clinically as being very different things. Yet we give all patients who meet criteria for those two disorders the same medicine. So the task now is to not be constrained by these very useful categories in clinical practice when we're doing research. When we're doing research, we're trying to tie specific clinical phenomena that cut across multiple disorders to a biological cause. And in doing so, we can then hope to find a treatment that will be tailored to an individual rather than a diagnostic group which we know are very heterogeneous. Going forward, the hope is that we can enter a golden age of targeted therapeutics where we can bring someone into a lab, we can give them a brain scan or have them do a cognitive task, and from that we'll be able to predict what treatment's going to work best for that patient.